Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and today I am at work. I am dismantling and destroying and harvesting this multi-multi-million dollar Nikon scanner. So, got all the tools and we are just systematically, this is two stories tall too by the way. Um, we are taking apart optics, electromagnets, um, plumbing, electrical, I mean you name it. I have to, t I have to lift up these floor grates. See these little floor grates? Uh, these floor grates, you guys see down in there, in there, this is like, this is what the, that's, this is the subfloor, and this is the floor. So you gotta remove these things up and they get up underneath the tool, take out a bunch of stuff in there as well. So today, that's the lens <whistles> barrel. It's like 24 inches. I actually, it's, here's my hand, so you can see how big around that thing is. Um, this is called the main body. This thing weighs over 20,000 pounds. You gotta lift it up on air bearings after we get all the stuff, all the ups, upstairs stuff off. Um, in case you don't believe me, here's the door. So if you look at the door, then you can see how tall this thing is in comparison. So, demolition. That This tool here was actually connected to this tool here. That's the track they're going to remove. In fact, they have a crew over here. Back there. They are taking out the track. So it's time for me to get back to work. Anyhow, so I am going to show you some of the cool optics that I'm harvesting from. Let me get underneath here. Underneath here. And then looking up underneath this. This is the wafer stage here, by the way. It's the wafer stage. So up underneath, um, they're, they're covered with all of these things here are some very cool optics. So I will show you those up close and personal. Check this out. But first I wanted to show you the jaws. The jaws of life. All right, so we get down here, and a lot of these <coughs> huge cables like this, just a bunch of wires all need to be cut. So, you get the jaws wires and just It's that simple. You definitely do not want to get your fingers in here. Because there is no mercy. Yeah. Danger. Danger. Man, look at that one. It's copper. Okay. All right, let's get out of here. <clears throat> Which way do I go? That way, that way, that way, hmm, I guess I'll go that way.
say, why are you being so quiet? Since I'm the only one here today. I don't know, that's a good, that's a good question. Why am I being so quiet? All right, this is the show and tell portion. First off the bat. So first off, how about a boring circuit board? Figured I could make a nice out of this. Big steel plate. Figured I could make something out of this. Of course I can make something out of this. I got some little motors. Of course I can make something out of this. Bunch of these little aluminum standoffs. hinges with springs tons of this stuff um, oh yeah check this out We have prisms. Okay, now this prism here I call the Rubik's Cube. This is very complicated to explain. If you have a laser pointer, like I do right here, okay, this laser pointer here goes to the input, right in that hole right there. That's the input. Then it gets bounced around, split, divided up into three for three different axes, X, Y, and Z. And then it bounces around, bounces around, gets sent out to mirrors on a wafer stage, and then reflected back. And then once it gets reflected back in, it gets superimposed upon itself and sent to these outputs. Now these guys here are fiber optic outputs that get sent to the computer and the computer counts the wavelengths and it can determine where the stage is but isn't that just beautiful this whole thing is on tungsten and tungsten is very heavy so this whole cube here and I have two of them I have a, a send and a receive this is the I believe this is the receive side here. These are retro reflectors. This is the receive side. And this one is the send. So they're both equally awesome. So for me, they're just trophies. Now I also have this huge lens barrel here. I would pick it up and show you, but it takes two people to lift this thing. Seriously. It's got one, two, I don't know how many layers of lens in there. Let me show you. Seriously, just think of the ants and the anthills that you'll be able to melt with that thing. 
you'll probably melt the dirt around their hole and turn it into glass with that thing. Yeah. So here's here's the little trophy wall. I have old ones up here. Oh, the magnets. Let me show you these magnets. First off, I'm not going to get this very close to the phone because magnets and phones don't get along. So can you read that? Okay, this is actually a small one. But there's two magnets, one, two, per side. And then it's meant to have a, a thing go in the middle here that you can control by magnetic, electromagnetic. So these guys are the small ones and I have a plethora of these. These are the big ones. This is one half of one side. These are neodymium. And, oh my gosh, are these things ever strong. Neodymium is a um, super magnet. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Alright, so it's lunch break right now. So let me go take this. And my amp. I thought I had a cord, oh yeah, and my guitar cord. Let's plug it in through a jam. That's for the thumbnail. All right, this is the show and tell portion here. Oh, I need a guitar pick. Ah, no guitar pick, dang it. I got candy. I actually have a guitar pick in my pocket, my back pocket. My emergency guitar pick. These are the settings. I wanted to show you actually a cool thing here. So typically in a blues type of situation, everybody does what they call the dominant seven chord. So like a dominant seven chord of the root would be um, and that's with the uh, index finger on the third fret, and my ring finger on the fourth, that is the uh, flatted seven and the major third with the root, the bass. And if I wanted to drop this into the four chord, my pinky would come up here, and then this little chord shape here would go down, and that would be another dominant seven chord, the four chord, and then back to the root. And if I wanted to make a dominant seven chord for the five chord, I would put my pinky seventh fret, and then index here on the fourth middle, and my ring, or not in this case here, my middle finger on the fifth fret high string. And this is the dominant seven chord for the five chord. And so this is the traditional bluesing, blues sounds. Instead of doing dominant seven chords, I want to do major seven chords. Let me tune up here. So I am tuned E, B, E. OK, 
Okay, so now, so the, the dominant, the, I'm sorry, not dominant seven, major seven. So let me show you a couple of major seven chords here for the root. One of them is right here, simple bar chord, uh, the high string and the middle string on the fourth fret. This is E major seven. And so you got the root, the major seven, and the major third. So it gives you that jazz da -da -da sound. Now we want to make a, a major seven for the four chord. I'm going to refinger here and I'm going to do root five major seven. So it's a different shape, but this would be the, the major seven chord for the four chord. So the root, the root, the one chord is, this is just one way to do it. There's tons of ways to do it. I'll show you a few different ones, but this is the easiest one. The other one is way up here on the 11th fret. So in case, like if I was doing this chord here, but I'm gonna let, since it's the 12th fret here, I'm gonna let these guys ring open and just hit this guy. So I have uh, root five, major seven. Beautiful chord. So that's the major seven. And here is the major seven for the four chord. But what I like to do for the five chord is still go back to the traditional dominant seven and back to the major seven for the four chord and back to the major seven for the root all right so i'm going to put all 12 bars together into one little jam and i probably will mess up and it's okay Kind of gives the blues kind of a lift, kind of a jazzy-ish lift. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the uh, show and tell and all the all the uh, high tech gadgetry and whatnot. I really did enjoy putting the laser beam in your eye here. So let me see if I could do that. Do that again here. Where where is the laser beam? Or where's the camera actually? Duh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ready? All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video, unless you're blind.